Hey, Irvy family, keep it I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morris, the review guy, reviewing music for the love of music, and I'm back again to bring you another video. And in this one, I'm going to be covering the new Fit for an Autopsy record entitled Oh, What the Future Holds. This is the sixth studio length album by the American deathcore band Fit for an Autopsy, and a shining example of what it means to have a completely critically acclaimed and hyped up record that not only sort of pays off in spades, but isn't just a bunch of buzz for no reason. I'm gonna be real, I'll probably miss some of the deathcore releases that dropped in 2022 at the start, because for whatever reason, that month was just incredible, and a lot of big deathcore releases dropped. I just reviewed Shadow of Intense record, and this was the next on the list, but like compiling my thoughts was just making me go haywire. Because up until this point, Fit for an Autopsy stayed in the lane of the deathcore similar to say Thy Art is Murder, specifically early Thy Art, or like impending doom. The very gruntural, low-end, distorted, despondent, chunky type of deathcore. But throughout the years, I think subsequently they have become more technical and more versatile with how they portray their music, with how they progress their music. But nothing could have prepared me for just how great this record is practically through and through. Usually as a critic on this channel, you know me, I like to nitpick shit. That's the point. I like to put music on your guys' radar and give my thoughts about it. But going throughout this record, I was consistently impressed by how this track listing not only met all expectations, but simultaneously subverted them. Here's what I mean by that. I genuinely think this record hits every mark that it's supposed to, but it's when they hit these things in stride that still you can't help it, but get a little gnarled, get a little twisted when a breakdown comes up or a cyclical riff or some sort of twisting labyrinth sort of riff. Every breakdown consistently just left me with that nasty face where you feel the build-up, you know they're building up to it, but you don't really anticipate that it's going to be as heavy or as vile. That quickly hit with the track Pandora, and it carried over to the really critically acclaimed single that was released last year and even ranked like it's one of the best metal songs of the year for a lot of people, Far From Heaven. And this track listing doesn't trail off either. It's not surprising, it's not inherently mind-boggling what they're doing, but it's such a tightly made record and such a well-produced record. The percussive works sound like straight fucking gunshots and they just kick your ass just continuously with these riffs. Very fast starts, very smart starts, and continuously up the ante to where it doesn't become dull. And even though it has like an amazing start, that's what kind of frightened me is with a deathcore record, usually if, if it's a longer track listing or generally reaching longer, which this track listing is nearly 15 minutes worth of material. If it has such a shining start, you sort of worry that maybe they're not going to be able to build on that. Maybe they're going to trail off. No, even on tracks like Savages and Collateral Damage, they continue to up the ante, up the bar, make these very heavy tracks that are extremely intelligible lyrically and conceptually. And that's another thing that continues to make me go back to this record. And it's something I don't think fit for an autopsy has hit to this degree before. So many poetic moments, so many smart lyrics, and if you're unfamiliar with what this record is about, and if you haven't looked into the lyrics or can't understand the lyrics, basically what this record entails in short, it's sort of a loose concept album, not inherently just straight up concept, but conceptually this record deals with a lot of meta commentary about the current range of society and where it's going, and how Fit for an Autopsy filters that through a lot of not only cynicism but anger and shame and guilt and rage. I think that the track Pandora, even if it's not the most popular track on this record, continues to be my favorite for numerous reasons. It's a blistering breakdown. The riffs are fantastic. The production's great. But I'm going to read off some of these lyrics and just tell me this isn't some of the coolest fucking worded metal lyrics in recent memory. Just the curse of coercion, two sides of a horrid mask, distorted dependence, loyalist to the falsest flags, wet work on the wasteland, whitewashing the rubble, it's never too many graves, it's always not enough shovels. The grave line is going to haunt me. That is one of the best phrasings I have ever heard for just the state of affairs in the world. Or on a track like Savages, absolute atrocity, the perverted perception of reality, rug sweepers conceal insanity, street cleaners bury the bodies, you can't fucking stomach it, pig stuffed and drunk on self-entitlement, the conscience is torn into parodies, all hell empty humanity. 
it's not grotesque, it's not gruesome, and it's this amazingly stark contrast where the musicality is heavy, it's throttling, it's buff and gruff, and it has this exterior of being tough as nails and so rough and rigid around the edges, but the lyrics come off extremely beautifully written and really intricately put and very eloquent and smart and tactful and calculated. And it's not something you would expect from a record that sounds this heavy. And pretty much conceptually, that carries over throughout this entire track listing with very smart lyrics that tackle topics that make their messaging just hit more than if it was just meaningless minutia lyrically. It just would not mean the same or hold the same merit because the messaging that they are trying to put forward is strong and poignant and powerful in a way that if it was just about, you know, blood and guts or something, you know, heavy or heavy metal, yeah, that's cool at face value, but it has more replayability and gets you thinking more in terms of enlightenment or just hearing a point of view and different perspective from a band. You can tell that they took a very long time crafting this track listing's lyrics. And that's not even getting into the production. The production is practically flawless. Ever since I heard the opening to Pandora, it blew me away. Sort of the droning, downtrodden introduction track was kind of like, oh god, they're gonna be like one of these generic deathcore bands that builds up with some drone ambient intro, but the lost and hopeless nature that opens this track listing up with that drone, it does feel sort of like a forlorn atmosphere, like this dystopian society outlooking this cataclysmic event that has like taken form all around us and sort of asphyxiated us. It reminds me a little of Cattle Decapitation's record Death Atlas, where metaphorically speaking, either lyrically or conceptually or with like the cover art, it really tells a story and this is one of the instances where the sort of overdone overblown droning atmospheric intro not only makes sense but sort of builds the tension going into Pandora and already puts the stakes very high and puts this edgy environment that is toxic to the listener. I'm very hesitant to say this because you guys should know I am an amazingly big fan of deathcore and metalcore and it takes a lot for me to say this but in the year 2022 I really think that Fit for an Autopsy has made a record that is pretty much everything you could want from a good deathcore record. The only thing keeping it from being perfect is the fact that Yes, a lot of the ideas have been done before. But sort of harkening back to what I said about subverting expectations, it's never distracting because they always continue to up the ante track after track after track after track, and despite having a very strong start, the mid-half and latter half not only continues the track listing very well, but ends it off really well. With a multi-phased, nearly seven-minute track ending off the record. Which I think is an example of when instrumental really means a lot for the track listing because admittedly this track can get a little repetitive and surprisingly even though it is like very theatrical and cinematic and an amazing sort of dark morbid ender to this like I said cataclysmic record it does sort of fall prey to repetition lyrically with a lot of the same refrains but there are still some really shining lyrics I will read a couple here I've dug this grave a hundred times the dirt exhausted as the mind make me the man that I was not cold feet at the altar of fire and hell the ash until the lungs retire make me the man I was not we are worlds apart are these really hauntingly ominous lyrics because the god that gives always takes away the paradise we dream just an oasis in the abyss I've dug this grave a hundred times if only to not exist in the tragedy between earth and sky where suffering collides like holy fucking hell like the lyrics here are so beautifully written as someone that has such a heart for like poetry and literature and lyricism I just cannot get enough of how this record is phrased. So even if this ender isn't the most harrowing, it still paints a very vivid picture, even if it's very long and sometimes falls prey to a lot of the same refrains. But yeah, this is an incredible record that I genuinely think everyone should listen to. It's amazingly written 
tightly produced. If you want to get into Deathcore, I think it's a fantastic way to start because it has every hallmark while still being technical but still being fun for like a new beginner to the genre. The lyrics are poignant and important and powerful. The vocals are very tightly recorded and tightly EQ'd. They're fantastic. They range from lows to highs to mids and have some really great group vocals too. And overall, instrumentally, this band kicks ass non-stop. They don't miss on this record. And dare I say, it's going to be extremely hard for a deathcore record, and I can say this early on into the year as someone with like an ear for this genre, it's going to be so hard for a band to accurately pinpoint what they need to do to beat this record this year as the best deathcore record of the year. Yeah, I can't suggest it enough. It just, it hurts. I want to go listen to it again. I want to go listen to Pandora. I want to cover Pandora. But anyways, I'm going to be giving this album a 9 out of 10, and that is a wrap. Have you heard this new fit for an autopsy record? Oh, what the future holds? If you have, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about it. I would love to discuss this record with you. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join the review family today, and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is. My name is Jay Morse, the review guy, and I'm signing off saying fair well.